Thank you for that question. Um, did everyone hear what the question was? What, what's perhaps the main uh, dance genre that's used in the classes? Is there a structure? Certainly, according to the regional training program, there is that structure, as I mentioned. You often start in a circle of chairs, progress to, to standing and travelling around the space. The, I think one of the brilliant aspects about the program is that it's very accommodating to any dance genre that the teacher might bring. So, certainly in the classes I was observing, there was um, ballet, there was contemporary, there was flamenco, there were other cultural dance forms, there was folk dance, and the, the beauty of the format is that it really accommodates any, any particular genre the teacher's knowledge and passionate about. And obviously the teacher then, I guess, se sequence those in appropriate ways for the group that specifically address some of the, the movement concerns and issues of the, of the um, people with Parkinson's. And there certainly within that will be opportunities for improvisation or activities as well. Right. Um, we may have the other speakers via um, audio. Is that correct? So I think we'll be joined by Sarah. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Oh, what yes. Is? We have Sarah Houston joining us as well as um, Roberto. Can you hear us as well? Yes. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> So we're just taking, um, I'm sorry that we didn't have a full chance to, to chat with you, Roberto. We're just taking a few questions from the audience about um, sort of the Dance with Parkinson's-based programs or health initiatives and um, the research that's being done. Are there other questions? Yes, here's a question. Um, uh, thank you for the, all the research. With um, 80,000 Australians working with Parkinson's, and it looks like these initiatives are uh, having such wonderful results, I was wondering, is there any sort of coordinated um, outreach to regional centres in Australia as well? Uh, we'd really like to do that. Um, and there are some local initiatives happening in Queensland to try and spread the program out. Parkinson's Queensland is trying to find the funds to do that. I think Jean will probably do some other programs have been up, you know, Gale, for example, it's happening as well too. So, yeah. okay. um, so uh, there are a range of um, practitioners, <laughs> and, and you, you know, Gail, you two were talking about, that uh, that do do these kind of programs out further out than in the kind of um, city-based areas as well. So it, it's also you know an, an initiative in terms of. Um, Dance for PD in teacher training to be able to train people up so that there can be more opportunities for people to run these classes in regional areas. From a Dance for Parkinson's Australia perspective, we are working with um, people across Australia to try to offer these classes. It's often a lot of um, building partnerships uh, with different arts organisations, um, different uh, sort of technological applications as well, as far as how we might be able to use technology in the future and are slowly, slowly growing the program. So, any um, questions from the audience? Any thoughts? Well, I might just um, have one closing question for everyone, since I know that we have um, the, the guests with us uh, sort of virtually. Uh, and the idea would be, what sort of collaborations would you like to see in your communities between uh, dance and science? going forward and how do you see those? And I'm sorry it can't be a very long answer, but what sort of collaboration would you like to see? Okay, um, so we might start with um, Roberto and Sarah. Um, Roberto, what kind of collaboration would you like to see between dance and science in your community? Um, we are starting now with that working with the, one of the male neurologists called Dr. Wolfer is going to start a measurement uh, on the impact that dance can have on people with Parkinson's. And this research is developed with one of our teachers. So um, I thought this was the beginning of a dialogue that developed at different levels uh, amongst our community, scientific and artistic community. Great, thank you. And, and Sarah, what would you like to see? Hey, I'm really interested in the concept of citizen science, um, which is where participants, the dancers themselves, 
get involved in the research, not just as subjects, but as active participants. Um, this is already happening with our colleagues in Germany, in Freiburg, where there's a three-way dialogue and conversation between dance artists, participants with Parkinson's, and scientists. And I'd, I'd really like to um, continue uh, with that idea. Um, and, and perhaps... Um, Perhaps there's an artistic outcome with that, so it's not just about um, finding out and understanding um, what is happening in the dance class through uh, measuring something, but actually creating um, some artistic work stemming from maybe those discussions and those measurements. Great, thank you. I think we'll start with um, what I'd like to see, I, I think, is I live in a world of science which has its language, dance has its language, and I'm trying to make these things uh, come together in some common framework. And so when I look at people, I use my measurement systems and um, my devices, if you like, but we don't actually use dance devices necessarily. So I'm trying to find out ways we can use technologies to actually encompass the richness of the movement itself but to somehow use that as the measure of change and progress. So that's my time. Um, from our centre in Bell Common Arts Centre in Canberra, we actually have started some initial communications and negotiations with the University of Canberra, which is right beside us, and they've recently opened up a, 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 a medical school there, and we're starting with some um, connections there about collaborating and adding that wonderful layer of scientific scientific rigour to to the dance. So as, as a dance focused person I'm really excited to to explore further that partnership and, and the evidence based research that that speaks that other language that I as a dancer am learning I believe. What can happen in the future, I'm really positive about what has been formed up until this point and, and how the two, our science and um, dance, have come together for this population of people with Parkinson's. If we look at trying to come up with a um, common language, I think we can start with the participants and how, how they voice their experiences with the different sorts of um, activities that they do to try and um, improve their symptoms or improve their quality of life and um, I think that's a fairly good common ground but I also think that technology has um, a lot that it can offer by looking at what goes on in a dance class and how people move in a dance class and how that relates to the improvements that we see from a, a scientific perspective so something that's not invasive um, and doesn't change the way that people participate in the dance class but, but then um, informing us in to understand what movements are actually contributing to these improvements. And for me, I would say it is great to see the current and the opportunities in the future make me very excited about how, um, with the help of science and collaborating with scientists, that what we intuitively know as dance is that it's so great for you that it's actually being proven in so many different areas and Parkinson's being one of them. So for me it's about the spread of um, how fantastic dance is and how it can reach a whole range of people and make such a world of difference in that way. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time for further discussion, um, but to find out more about the programs um, for Dance for Health Italia um, online or the U University of Roehampton program, it's also available online, um, as well as uh, our speakers who are here in the flesh as well to speak with you. I just wanted to acknowledge uh, Liz Lee and, and Jim Moyle for their uh, innovation and inspiration in, in hosting this uh, Dance Science Festival. Uh, as well as all of the speakers today here and internationally. Thank you so much for getting up very early in the morning in Italy. Roberto and Sarah, thank you. Um, and uh, to thank the filmmaker Alyssa McKeon for the first film at, at the beginning of uh, this whole panel. And thank you to all of you for coming. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye-bye.